time for another screw sorting device, but this time more modular, higher accuracy, bigger, more sizes and with an optional motor. A few months ago I made this device to sort M3 screws by their length. It worked well, but it's time for an update. And this is the result. Its function is very similar, but let's take a close look at its components. This is the hopper, a large container with a ramp where you drop in your unsorted screws. Currently, they'll trust the chaotic pile. From there, they get picked up by these moving walls. This step is necessary to separate screws from the pile and give them a rough orientation, as it's almost impossible to sort them directly from the pile. They are powered by an eccentric cylinder that moves the walls up and gravity pulls them back down. The walls and the cylinder aren't connected, so you can quickly change them out for different sizes. From the top wall they fall down into this rail. In there the screw aligns itself so it always has the same orientation. Really simple but effective. The rail is aligned steeply enough so they slowly slide down, but not too fast. If they slide down too quickly, they tend to jam here more often. At the end of the rail is a rotating disc with some cutouts. The screw slides in, gets rotated and rolls out. Next is this angled ramp, where your screw is supposed to roll down and fall into the correct hole depending on its length. You have probably seen this model by Layer Looks 3D, which was the initial inspiration and the reason why I sacrificed so many hours on this. I tried to make it as modular as possible, so if you need to sort by different length, you only need to adjust this part and you can switch it out easily. Below that are 10 removable bins that are catching the sorted screws. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't just work for one size. There are a few switchable parts that allow you to sort M3, M4, M5 and M6 screws. They are labeled, but I also decided to print each set in a different color. Switching out the parts takes a few steps, but it's really easy. First, rotate the pin upward so you can pull it out. Now you can lift the gear. Pull out these two pins and remove the ramp. Now you can take off this part. The moving walls will slide out downwards and the static walls will slide out to the front. To remove the rail, pull on the back latch and angle it so the overhangs at the front don't collide. To insert the new ramp, push it in at an angle. Once the overhangs are in far enough, you can gently push the back in. Slide in the static walls first. Then the moving walls from below. Connect it with the other parts using these two big pins. Switch the size on the gear and lock it in place using this pin. Insert the pin with the little nose facing upwards. Then rotate it counterclockwise to lock it. Apart from locking itself, it also presses the gears together using this nose. Without it, the gears will start skipping. And because of the direction the gear is rotating, it's unlikely that it loosens itself. You can operate it by hand, which is a bit slower. Or plug in a tiny motor. Plug it into a power bank, store it below the hopper and you can carry it wherever you need. I printed everything in PLA and aside from a few parts, I didn't need any support. I used 7 different colors and if you store your filament like I do, 
you've probably run into issues with moisture on your rolls you haven't touched in a while. So it was the perfect timing when Creality offered to send me their new filament dryer, the Space Pi X4. The first thing that caught my eye was the modern design. It can heat up to 85 degrees, which makes it suitable not just for everyday filaments like PLA, but also for more demanding materials like nylon and polycarbonate. Just by looking at the size, you can tell it fits up to 4 spools. And the cool part is that it has two independent chambers. That means you can dry two different types of filament at the same time with separate settings. For example, one chamber at 45 degrees and the other at 85. It doesn't just heat the filament. It also actively dehumidifies the chambers and works well as a dry box for storage too. Thanks to the one-way valves and built-in desiccant, which you don't need to replace, it helps keep your filament dry long term. There are rolls on the inside and seal parts on the outside, so you can print directly from the X4 without any hassle. The UI is straightforward and very intuitive. This is actually my first time using a filament dryer, but I had no trouble getting started. Everything just made sense right out of the box. Thanks to Creality for sending me one of those and if you want to get one by yourself, check out the link in the description. Now that you are ready to print, let's get back to sorting screws. And before you say that your unsorted pile of screws has all sizes and lengths in it, I already got you covered with this device. It sorts screws based on their size. If you haven't checked out the video about it, you should. Now let's use both machines to handle the chaotic pile of screws. So first we use this device to separate them by size into smaller piles of M6, M5, M4 and M3. And then we use this device to sort the smaller piles of screws by their length. We start by inserting the M6 module that sorts out all the M6 screws. Now switch out the module to M5 and pour the other screws back in. Same for M4. Now that we have separated them by their size, we can use the other device to sort them by their length.
While a device is reliable, there are a few things to keep in mind. Screws are unpredictable, especially with so many variations in size and length. That's why I don't recommend leaving the device unattended, like I did here. Sometimes screws don't align properly while sliding down the rail, because other screws are blocking them. Very rarely they don't get picked up correctly, which can block the rotator and cause it to skip teeth. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, rotating it back slightly by hand usually fixes it. If the walls aren't going down on their own, you probably need to file down some layer lines and sharp edges. Screws that are too short don't work properly because of their center of mass. They don't slide down the rail as they are supposed to and don't roll down the ramp reliably. I added this cutout to catch them. These issues are rare, but I wanted to mention them here for transparency. The whole model will be available for free, but if you want to support my work like these people did, check out my Patreon. Here you will get exclusive updates, model files, a special role for my Discord server, mentions in my video and you support the development of future projects. The link is in the description. Now for the assembly. We start with the base frame. Snap in the holder for the trays. Use this axis and push the eccentric cylinder and this gear onto it. Now take the motor block with the motor already screwed on. Align both parts like this. Slide it in from the top. If you want to operate it by hand instead, assemble the hand crank, fix it with this little clip, push it through the hand crank block and slide the gear on it. The rest is identical with the motorized version. Place the cover on it. Now take the big hopper, place it on top of the frame and secure it with these parts. Push them in with the nose matching the gaps. Then rotate it. To open it, just rotate it backwards and pull it out. Now insert the static walls from the front, then the moving walls from below. Make sure the walls move freely, otherwise they won't fall back down on their own. Connect it to the hopper using those pins. Push the rail from the top with a slight angle. Take this gear and push the rotator module onto it. Take the axis with the pin facing upward and lock it in. Add the ramp, the pins and you're done. I've prepared a 3MF file with all parts. Depending on your needs you don't need to print everything, but for more information check out the project page in the description. That's it for this project, thank you for watching and see you next time.